Welcome to the university. We offer lectures related to science and mathematics. We also at times create content related to other learning areas. If you like this channel, please extend your support by giving us a like, share our contents, and subscribe to the university. And don't forget to click the notification bell to get updated whenever we post new videos. Our topic in this video is about electromagnetism. We will start our journey as we trace the origin of one of the four fundamental forces in nature, the electromagnetic force. The Big Bang Theory explains the origin of the universe. It claims that all history of the universe dates back at the Planck's time which is 10 to the negative 43 seconds. The temperature during this time is astronomical and believed to be around 10 raised to the 31 degrees Celsius. During this state, all matter were in a soup-like form made from the fundamental particles of nature. It is because of the amount of thermal energy that the singularity poses. This is due to the fact that thermal energy affects phases of matter. They said to be compressed in a space like the size of a proton. It is believed that soon after 10 raised to the negative 43 seconds, gravity separates itself and became the first fundamental force of nature. From 10 raised to the negative 43 seconds to 10 raised to the negative 35 seconds, the three remaining forces namely, the strong, weak force, and the force of electromagnetism were united. At around 10 raised to the negative 34 seconds to 10 raised to the negative 32 seconds, the strong force separated from the electroweak force which is still conjoined with the electromagnetic force. There is also an astronomical inflation. Imagine a tennis ball that grows to that of the size of the solar system in just a matter of small fraction of time. Time passed by, the amount of thermal energy decreased. This happens at t is equal to 10 raised to the negative 12 seconds and the temperature around this time is 10 raised to the 15 degrees Celsius. The universe takes shape around 10 to the negative 6 seconds. After inflation, one millionth of a second after the Big Bang, the universe continues to expand but not nearly so quickly. As it expands, it becomes less dense and cools. The most basic forces in nature becomes distinct, first is gravity, then the strong force, which holds the nuclei of atoms together, followed by the weak and electromagnetic forces. Billions of years have passed, and mankind started exploring the fundamental forces one by one. We will explore the electric force. This is the type of force that acts between charged particles. It can be repulsive or attractive depending on the nature of interacting charges. The law of charges states that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. This force is calculated using the formula F sub E is equal to the products of constant K times the magnitude of charge sub 1 and magnitude of charge sub 2 divided by R raised to the power of 2. This formula or law tells us that the larger the magnitude of the interacting charges, the stronger the force will be. The smaller is the distance of separation, the stronger will be the force. The magnitude of the electrical force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance that separates them. The electric field. How do charges know where the other charges are located? The electric force is distributed over an area. It shares the properties of electric force acting over it, making it an electric field. Strength of the electric field. This is the amount of electric force acting over a charge. The formula for the electric field E is equal to F sub E, the electric force, divided by the magnitude of the charge, Q. This depends on the absolute magnitude of the charge and the distance at which the test charge is placed. Work done by an electric field. 
the electric field can move or affect charges in its vicinity. Hence, the electric field can do work on charges. Work is defined as the product of force and displacement. We also know that the formula for the electric field E is F sub E over charge Q. We can simplify this and we will see that it is equal to K times Q over R squared. And therefore we see that the electric force F sub E is equal to electric field E times charge Q. So the amount of work done by the electric field on the charge is computed by substituting this expression for F. We find that work W is equal to the product of charge Q times the electric field E times the displacement. We now define voltage. Voltage is the amount of work done per unit charge. We have voltage. Voltage V is equal to work W over charge Q. We have a formula for the work done and this is equal to the electric force F multiplied by the displacement D divided by the charge Q. We also know that F sub E is equal to the electric field E times charge Q. When substituted to the formula, we find that voltage V is equal to the product of electric field E and the displacement D. We can try to formulate an equation to count charges. We should recall that particles have charges that is either positive or negative. Electrons have negative charge. It has a magnitude of negative 1.6 times 10 raised to the negative 19 coulombs. The mass of the electron is 9.1 times 10 raised to the negative 31 kilogram. The proton has a positive charge and it has a magnitude of 1.6 times 10 raised to the negative 19 coulombs. The mass of the proton is 1.6 times 10 raised to the negative 27 kilogram. The total number of charges is an integral multiples of the basic magnitude of charge times n. We have a formula for Q which is equal to n times E. Electric current. Streams of electrons that are moving. Electrons are more mobile compared to protons. Electric current is defined as the number of charges that passes through a given point per unit time. We have current I is equal to Q over T. The unit is Ampere in the honor of a scientist named Andre Marie Ampere. It is also equivalent to charges that pass through a given point per second. One Ampere is equal to one Coulomb per second. We can now discuss the movement of the electrons. Electrons move in random direction. The resulting electric field ensures that there is a net displacement. As we can see in this diagram, the length of this conductor is delta x, which is equal to the drift velocity of the electron and the change in time delta t. The total number of electrons in this conductor is related to its concentration per unit volume. Volume of this conductor is V is equal to area A times the drift velocity times delta T. We can see that the total number of electrons inside the conductor at any given time is equal to Q, which is equal to N times V. This is equal to N times Q times A multiplied by the drift velocity and delta T. We see that if the number of charges changes per unit change in time, the current in the conductor is given by I is equal to delta Q over delta T. This is equal to N times Q times A times the drift velocity V sub D. We can try to find the electric current per cross-sectional area. The current per cross-sectional area is called current density J. It has a formula, current density J is equal to me over A. We will see that current density J is equal to N times Q times the drift velocity V sub D. The units for the current density J is equal to amperes per square meter. We can also explore the relationship of current density J to resistivity. 
We find that current density J largely depends on the magnitude of the electric field. Different materials react differently to electric field. In metals, the current density J is directly proportional to E. This relationship is called the Ohm's law. Discovered by the German physicist George Simon Ohm, 1787-1854, to 1854, in 1826. We define the resistivity rho of a material as the ratio of the magnitudes of electric field and current density. We have a formula for the resistivity rho is equal to E over J. The electric field E is found using the equation rho times current density J. We know that energy is lost during collisions. If we have a conductor with uniform cross-sectional area and uniform length L, and we apply an electric field, charges will react to the field and a potential difference will develop at the ends of the conductor. Charges tends to flow from higher voltage region to lower voltage region. The energy possessed by the charges is gradually lost because of numerous collisions. From the previous definition of current and voltage, we can see that voltage V is equal to E times L, where L is the length of the conductor and current I is equal to current density J times A. Solving for E and J gives us E is equal to V over L and J is equal to I over A. We can substitute this to the equation of resistivity and find the amount of resistance in a circuit. We can see that the resistivity rho is equal to V times A over I times L. We cross multiply L and A to the resistivity and find out that rho times the ratio of length L over area A is equal to V over I which is equal to the resistance R. This is also the formula for the Ohm's law. R symbolize the resistance in the circuit. Resistivity rho has unique values for each material. We see that the resistance increase as there is also an increase in the length of the conductor. We shall also see that the resistance decrease if the cross-sectional area of the conductor is also increased. The formula for the Ohm's law is resistance R is equal to V over I. We can now try to compute for the power in the circuit. Power is defined as the rate energy is delivered or converted per unit time. This is also defined as the amount of work done per unit time. The formula for power is P is equal to energy E over delta T, which is also equal to work W over delta T. The unit of power is called Watt in the honor James Watt. We can use the definition of voltage to find the amount of work done per unit charge. We see that the change in work denoted by delta W is equal to delta V times the charge Q. Substituting this to the equation of power, we find out that power P is equal to delta V times delta Q over delta T. This is equal to power P is equal to V times I, or P is equal to I squared R.